Hey folks, this is Mr. Abinetti coming at you to talk about the PSAT data cards and the results from last October's test. Your teachers should have some data cards with your names on them that the teachers have either passed out now or will pass out soon. I want you to understand what the data cards mean. So the purpose of this video is to explain what you see on the data card and how to interpret that data. Later on, Mrs. Brown is going to give you a video that explains a lot more detail about the S uh, PSAT scores. You're going to get a thick packet, but this data card just gives you the 30,000 foot view, the quick and dirty of your PSAT scores. So let us jump right in. And the first that you'll see, the front page, looks like this. You'll have your name, this is Sasha Scholarstein. She is a junior. The test she took is the PSAT, and she sees, as you will see, three numbers. Last year's PSAT score, this is her score when she was a sophomore. This year's PSAT score, and then her growth. Let me focus in on that. So you can see her name. Your name should appear here. I apologize if I misspelled your name. I I'm sure I made a few mistakes, but we have the names here, grade level in the test, and then we have last year's test score, this year's test score, and then the difference, your growth. Hopefully you so po showed positive growth. If you didn't, you're going to see a, a minus sign in front of this growth number. Now that's the front page of this data card. The back page has much more information. Let's take a look at it. So we have on this side, colleges and the 75th percentile SAT score for those colleges. Over here, we have other fun facts about the SAT. Let's look at these a bit more closely. So if we zoom in here, this is Mother Harvard. That's the seal for Harvard. And the 75th percentile students at Harvard, meaning students who are they're not average, that would be 50th percentile. 75th percentile are students who are 25 percentage points above the average and 25 percentage points below the absolute top. Those students are earning perfect scores on the SAT. It's, it's Harvard, right? The 75th percentile students at IU and Purdue earn the following scores. Can you get into IU and Purdue without earning such a high score? Of course you can. The 50th percentile students obviously earn less. But if you want to ensure that you're competitive for scholarships and that you're just competitive to get in, you want to score higher than the average. So these numbers represent 25 percentage points above the average. So these are 75th percentile scores for our flagship state universities. Then we have University of Chicago, uh, another aspirational school for many folks. Students score high, to be as to be expected uh, on the the uh, PS uh, the SAT. We have a couple of other uh, schools in state, uh, three other in fact, Ball State, Butler, and IUPUI. Just use these scores. No, they're not the average score. They're not the fiftieth percentile score. They're the seventy fifth percentile. But you still want to aspire to earn better than average to do your best to uh, be competitive at your school. Moving on, other fun facts about the SAT and the PSAT. First, scholars who score in the top 1% of the PSAT uh, qualify as national merit finalists, I mean semifinalists, and can compete to become finalists. Florida A&M, uh, an excellent HBCU in the South, will provide full-ride scholarships for national merit semifinalists. And then here we have some uh, other data, the SAT mud sock. Most recent data shows Fisher's ahead of HSC, to be expected. Not by much, though. I, I would expect us to be farther ahead of HSC. We'll get there. Now we see some other data, interesting data, I think. This shows how students in each grade level performed on the PSAT. Class of 2018 are current seniors. They earned a 1089 last year. So this is how they performed on the 2016 PSAT. This year's juniors beat them by two points. I mean, two points is two points. It's just two points. It's still, it's two points. Anyways, 
This year's juniors earned a 1091 average score on the fall 2017 PSAT. Sophomores earned a 1014 on the fall, this past fall's PSAT. Uh, last year's juniors, when they were sophomores, they earned an incredible score of 1043, I think was the average. So this year's sophomores didn't quite meet that level um, for the PSAT scores, but here's your average, 1014. And then the average PSAT for the freshmen, we don't know. They'll take it in October of 2018. Anyways, folks, this is Mr. Albanetti. Just wanted to explain this data card to you. I hope you. I hope it provides some insight into what this PSAT means, and I, I hope you uh, have your ears ready to learn more from Mrs. Brown about the um, PSAT packet that you're going to receive. Have a wonderful day.